Hi and welcome to the first ever Morning Sunsets podcast. Yes, I am recording this intro after the podcast because I realised I messed up and I didn't actually introduce it. My bad. Anyway, I'm Melody Powell, or most people know me as the Caring Llama over on Twitch, where this was originally live streamed. And I am joined today by Nick, otherwise known as Masters who also streams on Twitch. He is a mental health first aider, as well as just being a nice guy and a good Twitch streamy friend of mine. So, now, back to past me, and you can see the chaos that was the first Morning Sunsets podcast. So, who is this strange person that I have with me? Strange? Yeah. Who, Who is this strange person? You, you want me to you want me to say who I am? Yeah, yes, that was that was <laughs> Wait, everyone, a segue. Everyone knows everyone knows who I am. Um, I don't know. What do you want me to go by? I mean, I I mean, I'm a streamer. <laughs> who I are guess. you? We the never simple, even discussed this, did we? It's I'm a masters. very simple it's, it's question. Masters. It's masters. Hey, everybody. Hey. Well done. You passed the first test. It was a good <laughs> test. It's just security, you see. I don't. I know the password as well now. So, well, I know the safe word now. So, yeah. <laughs> Try going by your name, maybe. Yeah, exactly, Sassy. It's, you know, usually when people ask who you are, you respond with who you are. But that's fine. Hey, you're the first person who's ever asked me. Who are you? <laughs> uh, so, what are we here for, Lama? <laughs> what are we talking about today? We're here to have what a mental breakdown. I mean, no, we're not. That's we're not after. here to have a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting for this all day? Oh, thanks, Sass. I hope you're not let down. <laughs> uh, um, But no, we're here to talk about mental health, mental health first aid, and just general lifeness. That's about <laughs> right. how I would describe it, lifeness. Although earlier Master showed me his lovely, big, thick book. It was rather impressive. Book. Oh, oh, book. the book. The book. book. The yes. manual. The manual, mm-hmm. of course. That's yeah, the no, one. That we yep. can't forget. We can't forget about the manual. It's it's pretty it's pretty huge. But we're gonna be dipping into that thick book later, I guess. We'll be dipping in and out of it. But we might as well talk about what that actually is. So that's the um what is it? That's the MHFA. I don't know. Tell tell us what is it? That's that's the MHFA. <laughs> it's so mental health first aider uh manual for for adults um it's basically a big manual on on how to basically support people um or give guidance around mental health and first aid and stuff so that's pretty cool it's huge i could probably use it as a weapon um but yeah i wouldn't recommend that from a health and safety standpoint from a mental health perspective probably shouldn't use it as a (laughs) weapon either probably not if i'm honest (laughs) It's Maybe real there should be like a disclaimer on the first page that says, "Please don't use this as a weapon." Please only use this as a doorstop. Yeah. When you oh, oh I'm read it. Please read it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I've read it. I've read it back to front. It's um, it's pretty extensive, and it's something that you you go through. You go through this, and it's just a great. It's a great kind of something to have by your side when you go. Um, you know what you want to learn a little bit more, just kind of refresh your memory, and it's it's definitely helped me for a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about today, but. What is that? We've got a few topics set aside, haven't we? Ah, I guess first off, what the hecky heck is mental health first aid? How do we how do we put this in perspective? So, well, we all know what mental health is, or, or we would like to have like some sort of understanding of kind of like a basics of what mental health is. You know, that affects everyone in their day to day life, right? That's your that's your day to day. That's you know who you are what affects your personality, you know, what keeps you going through the day, what gets you up in the morning and what helps you sleep at night, isn't that really when you talk about your mental health and it touches so many different areas and it can be affected by loads of things, but what mental health first aid is, is about helping people maintain kind of a, I would say, a good mental health, help support people going through that kind of process and if there is any roadblocks or those bumps in the road, how to overcome them in some way. and. I'm, so I'm a mental health first aider. I've been a mental health first aider for nearly three years. And it's a course that you go through to understand kind of the pitfalls, the problems, the instances and the situations that you may come across as someone that has um, 
come across some issues within mental health. Um, with the positives and the negatives, I would say, because of course, mental health can affect you in lots of different ways. So you go for a course, it's usually about two days. You can take different courses as well. So there's different levels. Um, the main one is usually just about understanding and what the steps you can do as a mental health first aider. And then it goes a little bit more deeper into, I would say in some ways, maybe the, the darker stuff and how to support people in crisis and really deep mm -hmm. crisis and places like that for those that want to choose to do it. But it's, yeah, it's a really good, it's a really good tool. And it's, um, it's a good way of getting, if anything, I would say a better understanding within the community because it is still, even though it's, you know, been around for a really long time, it's a, it's a great tool to support someone in understanding better, help guide communities, the workplace, and, you know, individuals that might need a little bit of support along the way. Mm. In a nutshell, that's what in Mental Health First Aid is. <laughs> I was actually uh, looking into it the other night um, because I've been interested in doing Mental Health First Aid for ages, but it's quite pricey to do on your own. I think mm. it's like £300 for for a course which is quite a lot of money um it is so i did actually reach out to my work sent them a cheeky email saying hey there's this thing called mental health first aid i have this crazy idea that maybe you could pay for me to do this and funny enough you say that i i did that through my business so i was i was actually asked if I'd like to go and join this course and a group of us from our team, I think it was about 10 of us, we all went together. And I think that was awesome actually, being able to do that as a crew um, was really kind of enlightening. And also you're not alone, you know, you're not going in there. Sometimes it's a little bit daunting, isn't it? Going into a situation like that where you're going, okay, I'm going to go through a two day course where they're going to be talking about a load of stuff and bombarding you. Well, they don't bombard you, it's actually really quite chill. And um, yeah, it's nice. So the, the organization I work for put me through it. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a two day course. Um, like I said, you can go through some longer ones if you really want to, but really the two day course is really what just gets you set up on that course of how to best guide people that might need that support. So I would always highly suggest it. I think regardless, even if it is a case of you're going to pay for it yourself, it's hugely worth it. The only downfall I would ever say is that you do have to renew it. <laughs> but then again, yeah. how do you stay current? You have to stay current and that's important. And that happens every three years, I think. I think it's every three years. Yeah, Mine comes it, up in. It's every three years. I think mine's in July, so I'll be I'll be doing that again. Um, July's just a great of, month. Um, All the best all right. people were born in July. I wonder why. <laughs> but no, it's it's worth doing. It is worth doing, Lama. Well, why? Why is it worth doing, in your humble oh. opinion? Well, I mean, why is it worth doing? I think. I mean, if you want me from a personal standpoint, yeah, I mean, there's 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 a professional standpoint, a personal standpoint, and then generally just trying to support the community. So, you know, you're, if you become a mental health first aider, what do you gain from it? Well, actually, you don't really gain an awful lot yourself from it. What you're doing is you're supporting others to help maintain themselves. Um, and I guess it's worth kind of talking about, you know, why by talking about, you know, what you actually are supposed to be doing as a mental health first aider. So you're, you're not there to, you know, give a pill you're not there to tell someone what to do. You're not there to give unsolicited advice or say this is the way, it, or you know, get over it. You know, that's definitely not what you want. What you want to be able to do is give someone, is understand what someone is going through, listen to what they may need, and then give them guidance on what avenues that they can go down. So it isn't about, you know, we're not professionals. We're not the experts. We're not the doctors. We're not going to prescribe you anything. That's absolutely not what it is. And some actually do believe that that's the case but it's about being able to guide someone that may not realize that they need that help, or they may realize they do need that help, but they just don't know how to go about it or, and, and you know, giving them the support that's needed. So, you know, as part of being a mental health first aider, the reasons why you do it is to, ho is to help, you know, support those that are in that need. But there's a lot of steps that you need to take before that you need to go, do I need to actually support this person? Does this person need support? How can I do that? And that's what that course does. It helps you understand, you know, what it is I need to do. So. You know, for you as a person, yeah, you may not necessarily gain something from it, but you are definitely helping those around you if there is a time where someone may need it. Mm. No, that, that's a very good point. Um, the course I'm looking at myself is the youth one because obviously I work a lot with children. Um, but it was a hard decision of do I save up to pay for the adult one as well because 
obviously I'm also around adults in my life <laughs> and it's like I want to support everyone <laughs> but yeah I think it's probably a bit greedy to uh, get all of the mental health first aid qualifications like as soon as I can <laughs> I should probably pace myself a little bit <laughs> oh, I think I think there's I think there's something to be said there so you could you know you can definitely take a lot of that that knowledge that you get from you know going through youths um mha M mh for fa through youths and doing that course and there's a lot of knowledge you can take across to support you know adults a lot of it does align the same kind of way it's just the mindset and how mm -hmm. you may support someone in, in in that way in that form as you know we start to develop we think about different things adult life comes in and it changes and of course you know being being an adult the conversations will change as well so you can take a lot of that knowledge across i'm not saying you shouldn't you, you don't need to go and take those courses but just having an understanding of what you know what it is what can affect those individuals how it can affect someone and so on that will help you you know regardless and this is what i find quite interesting about there's there's kind of a misconception around mental health first aid that when you come across you, you come across an individual saying okay well now i know what the problem is i can just go and deal with it and it's, again it's not the case it's about having the tool set or your box of tools, as I like to say it, of, okay, someone might be, we we understand that someone's going through the situation. How can I put them on the right course to get that help that they need or how, how I can give them that self-care? And as much as it talks, you know, we talk about age groups and, you know, you know, if you're younger or you're older, they're usually the same. It just may scale differently. So just having that understanding really does help. And what was your training experience like? A, a smooth one or you're giggling so i'm i i I'm found it good i found it really good so you know and i i think just to kind of end my last point really i think it's quite amusing is that we we when we talk about self-care and we talk about supporting people you do it normally don't you if you uh, uh, you know how are you doing how's your day been you know what have you been up to you catch up with your friends you talk to your family and you talk about the good and the bad right so you do this naturally anyway it's about just really kind of reinforcing the point that everyone needs that support as well or whatever it might be so when you go into a mental health first aid uh, course uh, the one i took i I know that they sometimes can be a little bit longer and it's just really down to, you know, whatever people feel comfortable with. We did quite an intensive two day course, which was two full days, um, you know, start first thing in the morning, um, end at the time you normally finish for work. You know, it's it's it was they're pretty intense days and you stop for lunch and everything like that. But it's it's kind of just a natural, I would say, yeah, smooth process into, you know, what is mental health? What do you come across? You know, what do you need to think about? You know, we talk about things like algae, uh, talk about algae in a mo if you like, um, which is a process of how to assess if someone needs support, um, how to best support them and things like that. Uh, and that's usually on the first day. It's just to try and get you into the right kind of mindset that, you know, this isn't something that you just, you, you're not meant to know about this, but it, it helps that you do. And then the second day is about the kind of diagnoses that someone could have that were in who need support with a mental health first aid and that starts to get a little bit deeper mm -hmm. so that could be something around let's just say you know uh depression suicide bipolar areas like that i can go on there's loads of different areas of it and there's loads of different variations of it and it's about understanding those personality traits and if for instance you walking down the street and you see someone that needs a bit of support you know do i need to assess that situation or is it a family member that i've spoken to and uh, they've had a change in personality for instance is there something that i might be able to do to support if they're ready for that support things like that so it's it's it first day is really good i honestly say i think it's a really enjoyable experience and it opens your eyes a little bit more and you do get a good conversation with everyone's there because interestingly enough everyone's probably gone through some case of you know mental health in some way it's, it's unavoidable and then the second day, like I said, gets a little bit deeper, but it makes you, I, I guess, get an appreciation for, yeah, it gives you an appreciation for, you know, people that are going through that and that there are ways of supporting that wherever you can. I so mean, it's pretty good. Yeah, it does sound good. I, I do have to pick up one thing, though. Mm. You say algae and not algae. And that bothers me. Well, that's how they say it. I know, I know. But that I think isn't it's the, the word. I think it's the highlight, the double E. That's how they taught us. I know, I agree, I agree, I agree. Hey, look, I've been taught this way, all right? <laughs> uh, I mean, I just couldn't let it go. I was thinking, 
it's not important. It's not important, Mel. Just ignore it. But I could. Is it aluminium or aluminium? Yeah, <laughs> aluminium. <is. laughs> Couldn't let it go. No, I'm let's sorry. not go into that. <laughs> but speaking of algae, g g g, what yeah. is it, and oh, what does God. it stand for? Algae. So. Algae. Al algae. 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 I'm sure. I'm sure everyone will chat. Will we'll get a little bit you know, about <laughs> that. But no. So. It's A L G E E, and it's uh, it's kind of a methodology on how to, I would say, kind of best assess a situation as a mental health first aider and support someone. Um, and when I mean support, it's about giving that level of guidance if someone requires it, and so on. And it starts to go into a little bit more detail. But it's just a good it's just a good way of assessing a situation for someone. So uh, let's let's go through it. So you know, A is like approach. So it's assessing a risk. So assessing an individual for a, for a risk of maybe like harm, potential, you know, uh, thoughts of suicide, um, you know, bad thoughts, basically. Um, and it's about then, OK, if I'm assessing, approaching that person, I need to assess the right kind of time that I can speak to them. Can they speak to me confidently? Maybe I can guide them to speak to someone that they can confidently talk about. Um, encourage them to talk to someone, you know, not not say you need to talk to someone because there's a problem. It's like, you know, if you do need to talk about something, you know, you do have people out there that can support you. You know, you've got friends or family and so on. And, and if you don't, you know, lend that lend that ear if, if needed. Um, and that goes on to two, which is listen. So there's a thing about listening, isn't it? We we like to all form our own like kind of opinions when someone says something. So you can go, oh, I've done this today. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're listening to someone that's in the position where you know you're using algae it's about listening with without judgment so non-judgmentally so being able to you know listen understand i understand that you know you're talking about this you're feeling like this accepting what they're talking about listening and actually understanding kind of those keywords that are being said um you know like i've noticed that um, and, and, you know, and help that, you know, there might be a level of acceptance there. There might be something that someone might be having a uh, struggling with. And it's, and it's just basically, I say, it, I say it in a, in a basic term, it's almost like being a soundboard, right? And then it goes into something like give a reassurance. So it's then giving a reassurance or information. That's that point where you start guiding someone. So you say, I've noticed, you know, I've listened to what you've had to say. I understand how you're feeling. Um, I understand the, the points that you're mentioning. There may be some ways or roots here you know in a non-judgmental way you know and when i say i understand how you feel i don't understand how you feel i understand what you're saying yeah and those I, feelings. I understand yeah. that you're having difficulty yeah exactly and then it's about giving that guidance so as mental health first aiders you get a ton of documentation which is you know and for the uk for instance that's all i can really speak for is that you get a huge list of numbers websites learning documents and it's about sharing that information you know if you need to you know speak to calm or uh, uh, speak to mind um about you know your, your mental health this is a number that you can speak to if you, know, you need to speak to um, um a, spe a specialist gp in your area you know these are the people that you can speak to because necessarily a lot of people don't even want to look for that but when someone hands you a number and say look give them a call or jump on this website or look at this bit of research or this resource it's hugely useful and then it's about encouraging that so we're not all perfect you know we we all have flaws we all, we all have you know we all have um you know stumbling points and mm. it's encouraging appropriate help so like i said we're not professionals we're not experts we're there to guide so i mean it's at about the end guiding. of the day nobody's an expert on your own mental health except you you know you everyone's experience is completely different um, absolutely and it's and it's about you you knowing yourself so but sometimes you may know yourself so well you might go i don't need help <laughs> you know it, it gets to that point doesn't it where you say okay maybe i don't need i can i can handle this myself and that's where we that's where the two e's come in so one of the e's is about encouraging appropriate professional help so it's about maybe you need to speak to someone you know maybe it's worth you know opening up to you know going to you know talking to someone about therapy or you know speaking to a doctor or a gp or someone like that but you know, some people might say, you know, actually, I'm just having a few bad days. Maybe maybe it's the cases that I, I, I don't need that. Then the next encourage is about self-help. It's about self-support, um, support strategies, how you can help yourself getting through those routes and how to make the most of those. And again, the only person that knows that is you. Yeah. But we can always help. And so yes, of course, you're right. It is basically like traditional first aid, Dr. ABCs. A different mode of first aid really they both yeah. save lives in different ways 
<laughs> totally. I, I think I think the mindset's a little bit different, but the methodology is still the same, right? Yeah. And that works. And it's it's a shame that mental health first aid is still not fully encouraged because not everyone knows about it. Whereas traditional first aid, I feel like every workplace will have someone who's first aid trained by law. And then yeah. when it comes to mental health first aid, it's more of a nice to have than a necessity. <laughs> do, do, do you know what? It's funny you say that. So when we say like no one knows about mental health, I think everyone knows about mental health. No one knows how to manage or support mental health. I think I think that's it. So when we, you know, mm. you know, I'm going back a few years now. I'm not going to talk about my age, Lama. I apologize. Um, <laughs> but you know, when I was a lot younger and I was going through, you know, uh, you know, bouts where I was having, I was struggling in some way. I was usually told, "Oh, you'll be fine. You know, don't worry about it. Oh, you might just be having a bad day or something like that." And that's, and as much as that is, you know, that's old. That you know, it's, it's an old term. It's an old way. It still kind of exists today because it's kind of how we've been. I would say some of us need to change those minds. Have you know, just it's kind of been. It's the it's the it's the way that we've been, you know, brought up or we've been taught or you know, you might have gone through school and something like that. It's something maybe yeah you know told to get get over it don't be so sad why are you so sad and actually it's it's not about th having that being said to you it's about how you can get the support to maybe manage that and that's where it really comes to that mental health and that, that's something that's actually kind of rare and that's why coming into groups like i said go and do mental health as a group doing it as part of your business and offering the support if it's needed not forcing that help is how you really demonstrate positive or i would say you know good best good practice within mental health first aid go take a hot bath when you get home oh yes everyone knows that's the cure for every mental health condition just a nice hot bath you, you're just you're just don't worry about it you'll be fine go to bed get an early night it's, it's yeah. it used to be that an awful lot and what i am seeing now and this is the thing we all have bad days and sometimes that happens and it just makes you it infuriates you because you're not getting that support but that's that's fine they just don't get it yet. You, you, they just don't get it yet. And, and that's something that takes a lot of change and it's not going to happen immediately. Yeah, I mean, the amount of times when I've been having sort of an OCD germ panic attack, people go, yeah, but it's fine, it's safe. Oh, thanks, I didn't think about that. God, oh, I'm cured. Thanks. It's like, that's I not how my brain works. I know the logic. It just doesn't listen. <laughs> oh, dear. No, it is. It's, but you're right. You're right. It's, it's one of those things where it then gets to the point where you feel like, what's the point of explaining this to someone? Because they, they don't care. They're just going to go, aha, uh -huh, you're fine. And then carry on. It, it's when you speak to, and I, you know, personal experience, isn't it? It's when you speak to maybe um, a family member or someone that you may know, you're quite close with, and you mean your best mate, for instance, or something like that, and you'll say all of this, and they'll be like, yeah, I, I yeah, I'm not, I'm not, that's not me, I don't yeah. understand it, or, or I'm not, I'm not really comfortable to talk about that. And again, that's fine, <laughs> that's fine, um, but it's about just broadening the mindset and understanding that that is something that exists and it isn't something that we're some even people think that maybe we're creating drama for instance or oh you know we just want attention or something mm. like that no we just you know we just want a form of support and it could be your self support or it could be yeah. from others giving you that little bit of extra something and that's always nice right yeah i mean definitely there've definitely been times where i've rung friends and i've literally just cried on the phone and they've just been quiet and gone okay are you done having your crying fit now can we actually talk about what the problem is <laughs> it's like yeah thank you for just letting me cry on the phone for half an hour and that's what you need sometimes <laughs> yeah sometimes that's all it is i i'm not i'm not gonna say i i, I do go out and cry on the phone um but i definitely <laughs> feel like sometimes that is someone that's something that's needed or just yeah. screaming into a pillow you know yeah. <laughs> that works too. internally screaming no just bring it out we used to um a business i used to work for a long time ago we used to have something called the room and it and it basically was a first aid room which was used um it was almost a little bit padded it was old school and um we used to call it the 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 screaming room <laughs> and no one ever used it but it was like if you're ever going for a situation where you just need to like just wail um use that room 
a long time ago. That is not something we, we it was absolutely fine. It's not something we talk about now, but it was <laughs> it was still a case of like, okay, if you need to let it out, let it out, you know. Yeah, I mean there was definitely I was when even when I was at school, which wasn't that long ago. Was I thinking about the year? It's longer than I would like it to be. <laughs> it it was. If you got overwhelmed and couldn't cope, it was just kind of a yeah, go outside for a bit and deal with it and then come back. Take like, a breath of fresh air. But, but that doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't get rid of the problem. That's not there's, the... <laughs> there's also the case of, you know, what it is, what is that will actually help you? What it is. So we could assume, we, 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 we naturally assume, don't we, that going out for a breath of fresh air, go and have a walk around the building, go for a little walk around town, go and visit the, you know, go and get yourself to some retail therapy or whatever it might be, that that's going to help you. But then there's a load of things out there that, I mean, that might not help anyone or might not help someone. It might help someone else. But there's there's no kind of this is the way. There's no like this is the stamp that we need to use to get what I need where I need it. And and that's where, you know, going back to that whole mental health first aid kind of part, It's it's about understanding that, there are so many different ways and every day you'll speak to someone and they will have a way of dealing with something or coping with something. I mean, I've got, I've got a ton of coping mechanisms, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you've got loads too. Yeah. Maybe odd ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mine have changed a lot over the years because my mental health has changed a lot over the years. Um, yeah. I mean, especially being stuck inside for two years, that, doesn't help the brain process things yeah that does change a lot of a lot of ways of maybe doing something isn't it yeah yeah you can't go outside anymore sorry you can't go to the park anymore yeah it's you like know? oh okay um well what do i do then i'm ordering from amazon now i can't go to the shop you know it's, yeah it, it does and it changes but you you do people do adapt that's what's amazing people do adapt absolutely coping mechanism what's that cries into guitars and pizza i mean <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm not gonna lie starbucks is one of my coping mechanisms i i'm obsessed with starbucks what? and they are my safe place <laughs> what are what are your coping mechanisms like what what kind of coping mechanisms do you have that you want to share genuinely one starbucks if i'm feeling super overwhelmed i will either get a takeaway starbucks or if I'm feeling up to actually going in, I will sit in a Starbucks and everything is fine in Starbucks. Even though it isn't, the world is still on fire. But in Starbucks, everything's fine. <laughs> I, I can imagine I can imagine that meme with everything is fine, but I can just see your face within a Starbucks coffee next yes. to it. Just fire around <laughs> you. This is fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Sips from coffee. <laughs> Basically um but I, I also do the sort of the five senses of like what can i see what can i hear what can i feel one two three taste i've missed one of them and i can't think which one i've missed you... <laughs> the other sense <laughs> that other one um what can you hear isn't it did you say yes that? here i didn't say here that's it yeah so you've got that do you think, I, I i i wonder actually how many people actually know about that that's that's really kind of an old school tried and true method of dealing with or managing you know that kind of situation i don't know if it's worth talking about really yeah i mean it, it definitely helps if you have too many thoughts in your head because a lot of coping mechanisms don't work if you have a lot of thoughts in your head because there's just no space to think but either a lot of people who don't have breathing problems use focusing on their breathing but obviously if you have breathing problems like me that just makes you more anxious so i need to focus on external things so just focusing on i can feel the softness of my jumper i can hear this music an annoying person called masters i can i can smell food in the kitchen and it just kind of brings you back to the moment you're in rather than the fabricated world that your brain has kind of put you in in that moment which is hard to come back from sometimes it's a bit of a pit sometimes isn't it yeah it's scented tough. candles are amazing you can make whatever smell you like there actually don't take that into anyway 
<laughs> anyway, I, there's loads. Yeah, there's loads of coping mechanisms. You know, like what can you see? You know, see, hear, touch. All of that's great. I mean, but then it's there. There are other things like what do you really enjoy? And do you feel like like a lot of people who, who suffer from? I say a lot of people generically. It's not the case, but there's a lot of people out there that if they feel that they're not very productive they start to get themselves into kind of a you know kind of dig themselves a hole really they start to put them pull themselves down you know get uh what do they call it um they get to the point where they actually just feel like they're even though they're incredibly productive or they're doing so much work they just feel that they're not getting anywhere they're almost like an imposter syndrome um you know there's loads of things that you can do to kind of get yourself out of that and that it, it all comes back to you know looking at the perspective perception that you have today like how what have i done today how have i been successful today what's happened today how did it go today um and focusing on the good things because a lot of us really na naturally we focus on so many negative things uh, we we talk about all all the bad don't we we complain about the bad all the time and being typically british i like to complain don't i um or maybe not complain so much you know i don't like know to do i just all the time. as humans we are programmed to focus on the bad as like a survival like oh this was bad don't do that again it's, so it's so easy to forget yeah but i actually got out of bed today and like i washed the dishes like wow but you don't look at it like that <laughs> by yeah and by doing that even though it's so small it's it is a huge thing for some you know i i mean you think actually every single day we get out of bed we you know brush our teeth we have a shower a lot of people maybe not in the best place might completely skip all of that altogether and just you know get on with what they do and they don't look after themselves or they don't practice that self-care and actually you know just getting up in the morning brushing teeth that's self-care you know yeah. just getting up at the time that works for you or getting a little bit of extra sleep that helps you um it will help a lot of people naturally but it's it's an achievement being able to actually focus on something and be able to get uh, a result from what you do and that's the best way of focusing is getting a result from something yeah and i've just seen that Poss and BZ have and Jax have said that apparently biting your nails and your lips isn't okay and I mean yeah it isn't okay for your body's health but I mean I feel like so many people end up with that as one of their sort of anxiety triggers because I know I bite my lips I'm sure if you go back and look at this I've bitten my lips while I have been talking like i could always guarantee it it's Thank one you. of those things that everyone does but for some reason still feels ashamed <laughs> you shouldn't you shouldn't feel ashamed by biting your nails or or whatnot i think it's when you start to draw blood that's when you might need to have to maybe think about your choices um it's you still know. nothing to feel guilty about it just means hey maybe i need to work on other coping mechanisms <laughs> Yeah, and that's where that's where going out there and actually kind of, I guess, understanding yourself is the best thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you're never going to get it now. You know, you could be you could be 10, 20, 30, 40 years old and you still have no idea exactly what actually really makes you tick. It's just about mm. finding the little things in life that can help you along the way. Mm. Rules, but... but oh, yeah, no, yeah. you go ahead and read that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at that point, it's worth talking to your doctor because you could have um trichotillomania i think is the picking one is it that trichotillomania might be hair Derma dermatillomania is the skin one yeah that's your derm der yeah derm der 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 yeah and again it's quite a common it counts as self-harming I know people don't like to look at it that way because then it's like, no, I don't self-harm. But it's just your body's way of trying to put your anxiety somewhere because yeah. you then fidget and then fidgeting turns into touching and touching turns into pulling and it's just trying to break the anxiety cycle, really. As with a lot of mental health, it's, it's the cycle that gets you. <laughs> I know chat are talking a lot about we've oh wow looking through chat now there's a lot of talking about a few things but i don't know chat have you got any what are your coping mechanisms i guess is probably the best question i mean Stupid everyone's got brain a few. trying to hurt other body parts yep the brain is mean isn't it 
really, if you think about it. Hard he to just tame. hates everything. <laughs> Rocking back and forth, yeah. I've got I've got walking works wonders from salt. Yeah, walking's mm -hmm. walking's good. Walking's like one of the best way. Just exercise. Exercise generally, mm -hmm. in some way, is a great way of coping with something. Animals, yeah. That's Animals it. are great. I mean, whenever my partner feels sad, he's like, I'm going to go over to my mum's and hug the dog. <laughs> like, that's immediately what he says. And it's like, yeah, animals are great. <laughs> <laughs> Beasy. I think it's do one of my favorite. Oh, screaming. Okay, I was a bit like, um, what? <laughs> yelling, yelling, screaming. As long as it's not hurting anyone else, go yeah. ahead. Make a bit of noise. My household is a pro screaming household. As long as we let each other know, we're like, hey, I'm just going to scream. And it's like, yeah, okay. And then you go out into the garden and scream. It's great. I've got, <laughs> I've got one here, uh, escapism. So just getting away from it all, I guess. That's always a good one. Just, you, you know, closing yourself off. Actually, that's that can be really addictive, actually, mm. just kind of closing the doors and just completely cutting off the world um, in some way or form. Going out into the woods... Uh, going to a pub, you know, or just going for a walk in the, you know, wherever. It's just, just get away from people around you. Um, sometimes can work wonders, can't it? Occasionally, I just scream for volume in my car. I'd love to see my dash cam footage. <laughs> I don't know why I found that so amusing. It's a little I static. Just, I was just like imagining a compilation of Jack screaming at different pitches. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Like aggressively that new... yeah that is a new youtube video isn't it yeah. uh aggressively lip syncing edgy songs at 2am oh my god yes 100 percent. that's me lying in bed a little later than 2am music Just... yeah <laughs> what a winner music is a winner it is i think it's oh it works so well for everything isn't it calm you down get yeah get you rolled up you know make you happy it's perfect it helps you in so different moods it's great lip syncing at what 4 a.m llama four five six it helps you get to sleep <laughs> well that's how this podcast ended up being called morning sunsets because i often wake up when the sun sets <laughs> and that's okay if that's how we function and you still get things done that's okay nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that you're not alone you're not alone there. <laughs> morning somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah in some time zone at some point there's definitely someone that's willing to talk to you don't worry about hey, it you'll be exactly. fine exactly <laughs> <laughs> always good uh, now i'm full on standing in my pjs in the dark lip syncing my heart out tears and everything yeah oh my god yes in fact i did that to a justin bieber song the other day don't judge me um judge. <laughs> i was listening to his newer album and i fell in love with lifetime and i was like oh my god this is the most beautiful song i have ever heard I listened to it about 10 times in a row, just crying and lip syncing in the pitch black. You know, if anyone was watching me, they'd be like, Are you okay, dude? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> just close the door and let you get on with yeah, it. Yeah, just like, I'm going to leave you to it. But be, sometimes you just, bit. yeah, sometimes you just need it. Hey, <laughs> uh. what? I. I've got some really, really weird coping me mechanisms. I don't know. I feel like they're weird, but they're probably loads of people are probably thinking, yeah, no, I do this all the time. I don't like, think anything is weird, to be honest. Ah, oh, I don't know. I think it's a little, I think it's a little bit odd. I think, Come you on. know, I don't know. I Like, so here's the thing, like doom scrolling. So you know what doom scrolling is. So yeah. <laughs> a coping mechanism is me going onto Insta and just going through everything and i and and what i get enjoyment out of is finding the stuff that i was like i'm never ever gonna see this again and i'm happy that i won't but i'm enlightened that i did and it's just a way of dealing with things it works really well for me um i don't i don't know why i can lose <laughs> hours to it but it, it definitely helps in some way or form when i've got the time um i don't know something else i i just go i, I like i like going for incredibly long drives like i will go 
four hours if I really need it. Like, like drives to London. Where I haven't driven people to live. London for I haven't driven to London for a while, actually. Well, it's a, nice, it's a nice long drive. It is a nice <laughs> long drive. It's like four hours for me, I think. I don't know. It might be a little bit. Drives to Wales. I mean, th these are all options for long drives. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few. I've got some weird ones. Definitely. I don't know. Some people are like, why are you, why are you wasting so much money on fuel? Why are you doing this? I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy. It's something that I enjoy. I'm just going to go and do it. So there's loads of things you can do. I mean, if that's what you enjoy, does it really matter how much it costs as long as you can afford it? Obviously, yeah, exactly. don't put yourself out of pocket, but if you can afford it and it helps you, it's then like what's saying the problem. But gas is expensive. Yeah, it has gone up lately. It's got a little bit better, but it could be better. It could be like eighty nine pence, like it was back in the day for me. Back in the day when no. I. When I nope. was a kid, nope. I was a sad kid, okay? Don't judge me. But when I was a kid, I was obsessed with gas prices. Like, <laughs> I, because there's a petrol station at the end of my road. So, like, I was obsessed with what the daily price was. And I miss when it was in the 90s. Like, that, that was my childhood. And now it was like 140. Like, <laughs> that's not okay. Breaks your heart. But yeah, I was that really weird kid who was like, Oh, hey guys, have you seen what the fuel price is today? I'm trying really hard to not be judgmental here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What I was a strange going? child. I love the Genuinely idea of sus. <laughs> That was me on the drive to school. I'd be like, Mom, look, this one's really cheap. Or they'll be like, I really need some fuel. Right, I know exactly where we need to go now. <laughs> Brings out my map that I've hand drawn. <laughs> you don't even understand it yourself. You just see there's one that looks like a shell. One that says BP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's one with a shopping basket. That's a sh that's What's that now? What one has a shopping basket? Let's go. That's it. On a child's map, it would be. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> wait, my knowledge. I don't know about this. <laughs> Apparently, I'm still obsessed with fuel prices. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. And that's the thing. It's things like that that you can get your mind around, that you can focus on, that can help you with stuff like that. You know, like if you, you know, just being able to gain that focus again can help in a lot of ways, can't it? Yeah. And it could be anything, Llama. It could be anything. Oh, God. I just attacked myself with my blooming string. Don't do that. Uh -uh. No, that's that's not going to help you. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, I mean, that's the thing. Like hobbies, hobbies. That's like the best way of dealing with shit like that. Like constantly just being able to. Okay, focus just on to stuff clarify, fuel is not my hobby. Just to clarify, do not do not write that down about me. That is not true. I <laughs> I'm not too sure about that statement. <laughs> Uh, not yet. Anyway, not yet. Uh, what what is your hobby then? What what keeps you relatively sane? Are you asking me what keeps me relatively sane? Yeah. Oh wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, there's loads of things that can keep you sane. I don't know what what can I what do I do? I mean, I stream three days a week. You know, doing doing my twitch streaming like that keeps me focused and helps me deal with things you know that keep, allows me to kind of put some time aside to go and you know focus on me and you know get to know people get chatty again and stuff like that when you might have had a really long day um i mean generally gaming can hugely take you out of like the real world and kind of put you into something else which is always nice kind of takes you away from those things i'm all for that um you know music is always a great thing like i said driving is always nice as well um but i mean there's there's i'm i'm i can get really nerdy about some stuff you know like just there are so many things out there that i could probably draw out i mean one thing is probably like D. &D. oh that's, i love that's D &D. One thing. I, sorry I that completely... was a demonic response i apologize it wasn't deep <laughs> enough <laughs> D &D. it needs to be deeper there you go perfect <laughs> perfect no like D is a perfect way 
to uh, well a great hobby but it's also like a perfect way of kind of taking you out of it and making you think a little bit more than what you normally would when you're doing other things as well because you're you're completely you're completely sucked in and that's amazing i love that to bits um yeah and you know like it sounds weird as well but like board games my god and you not see my board game collection <laughs> like that is oh probably a 10 foot tall bookcase that's full of board games <laughs> i'm jealous <laughs> you should be oh no i am i'm very <laughs> jealous now i've got a reason to come over exactly apparently the only reason you like me is board games but okay <laughs> not the only reason you have starbucks it's fine i mean i do have a starbucks like up oh, to my left you can kind of see it in the corner of my stream <laughs> uh but yeah i think i think when it comes to hobbies i always used to struggle because i never knew what i liked to do like people would be yeah just get a hobby and i'm like oh okay how <laughs> how do i buy a hobby what <laughs> that's the key word isn't it buy like a lot of <laughs> hobbies cost money and when you're a kid you don't have well, you don't really have that much money, do you? Aww. It's not your money. No, and it's like, I didn't have many friends as a kid. Like, I just didn't. So I wasn't exposed to different things that were going on. And so it was just like staring at a supermarket like, huh, are any of these things a hobby? <laughs> until i eventually found video games and it was like a eh, hobby <laughs> but people make it seem so easy to find a hobby which i think is often quite intimidating if you don't know what you like i think you see a lot of people out there that are really good at something and they that becomes their hobby you know like i mean you could say sports for one of them but there'll be it could be loads of different things you know gaming whatever um you know going out and playing tennis or going for a run and you're really good at it and that that becomes your hobby but there's there's a big difference between something you're really good at and something you hugely enjoy yeah and actually there's there's a big line there actually you know you might and also yeah you know, now you said it say about money like there are so many things you want to experience like people people are going nuts now about things like vr you know, and everyone wants to get involved in it and do something. And, you know, you've got all this new change, like metaverse and all that stuff, wherever that may go, maybe nowhere. Um, but then no one can buy a headset because they're so expensive or because there's a shortage, you can't get hold of them. So you can't pursue a new hobby. So you then have to rely on everything else. And you may not have an awful lot out there. And, um, you know, the last two years don't really help either, do they? <laughs> not really. No. Although I did discover new hobbies while being stuck in one room. Oh, go uh, on. <laughs> I discovered that I <laughs> I discovered that I really like talking. So, and here uh, we are. Yeah, that that's kind of a thing. I was like, hmm, I enjoy talking. And sometimes I say stupid things when I talk and it makes people laugh. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I say again, here we are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I also struggle because I have a really bad attention span so i'll get really into something and then i'll be like eh, i'm bored now and then i just have all this stuff <laughs> like i have drawers full of fabric and paints and because for a couple of months i'll be really into something and then yeah i don't really like it anymore <laughs> tell you something that tell you something that weird a weird hobby that i got into recently over lockdown which was, which still people laugh at me today, and I don't know why. I'm mainly because of probably what it could probably imply in the future. But I'm now really good at lock picking. <laughs> I picked a lock, picked up a lock picking set. Decided I wanted to learn how to do that. I've now picked pretty much every single lock in the house, and that worries a few people. I mean, you know, you've got to use it in the right. It's like great power, great responsibility. Um, just don't annoy me too much, or I might be on your sofa. I mean, to be honest, I've literally invited you to mine, so I would just open the door. But sure, if you want to pick the lock, no, no, go no, for no. it. No, 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 we don't need a key. We don't need a key. I got this. <laughs> oh, over lockdown, I bought nearly 30 different pets. Yeah. 
I think a what? lot of people went through pets, Jax. Although your pets tend to have a lot more legs than other people's pets. To be fair. <laughs> Wait, is that is that even how I've thirty different pets? Like, yeah, spooders. I need to know what spooders? Yeah, Jax has loads of spooders. Thirty and mantis mantises, mantis, okay. lots Man of manti. What's the plural of mantis? Insects. Insects. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like that, that, that'll do. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Oh, house plants though. Oh, mantids. Mantids. That sounds like mantidies, but okay. Crawly friends. Oh, I like Crawly that one. Friends. I'm liking that one. I'm liking uh, that one a lot. Oh, plants have definitely become part of my life now. Plants are now plants are now my one of my go tos. Like oh need to maintain maintain a few plants oh you know what i'm just gonna get loads of them and maintain them all plants stress me out because i'm paranoid i'm gonna kill it i mean that's the that's the trial and yeah but at least with animals they let you know if you've forgotten about them <laughs> they'll be like hey mom 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 and it's like oh shit i haven't fed the dog oh I, I can just imagine you being like getting a checklist out for each plant yeah Watered. i get Kicks. I have OCD completely, yes. Like, I have an app. Have, have they got enough I, sunlight? I genuinely have an app on my phone that tells me <laughs> when to water my plant. Um, I don't know if it will show on camera. Wait, you... But if there's an app, people uh, will come, I guess. Yeah, like, that's genuinely how I live life. Yeah, to be honest, it is my mum that kills them. That That is a fair point. <laughs> But, you know, I'm hoping not to inherit that. Oh, you have 13 tarantulas, 7 mantids, 4 assassin bugs, a snail, a tail, a tailless whip scorpion, 4 spooders and 2 bunnies. Oh, I forgot about your bunnies. Oh, I forgot yeah. about the quote unquote normal pets. <laughs> I, yeah, there's, there's also normal pets among those. Yeah. Makes sense. Oh. Seems legit. <laughs> do they all get along that's the question probably not i mean tarantulas would probably eat most of them bunnies well okay they wouldn't eat bunnies i mean they they're, no, they're not big enough Ed, come on now bunnies are massive depends how big the bunny is like bunny sized be a baby bunny Hey, look, let's not talk about what spiders <laughs> are capable of doing, all right? I might terrify even more people than just myself right now. <laughs> Some of my bugs eat, eat each other. But mostly yeah. Ah. Uh, bugs be bugs. Bugs be. Bugs be. Bugs be bugs. Masters. Mm. On my list of pre-prepared. Prepared, even. I can talk. I'm glad you did something. <laughs> pre-prepared questions. Go on. The ones I have on here are... Have you ever personally struggled with your poor mental health? I mean, yeah, of course. I think I think everyone has. I, I mean, yeah, I definitely I've definitely struggled for a few years with things like you know depression and, and some other bits and pieces. Um, didn't wouldn't wasn't really that supported back in the day. Um, I would say I think now it's not really not really a big issue. But finding coping mechanisms and things that you can do to help yourself over the last few years has definitely helped me. But now that there are communities out there it's definitely helped a lot so yeah i've definitely i've definitely dealt with quite a few quite a few things and i've been I've, i would say i've probably been in contact with a lot of things as well so you know family members people that are quite close to me um friends you know that have all kind of struggled in some way or form so it's nice to yeah it's nice to know that you're not alone in that but also you know being part of that and having at least a little bit of understanding around it always helps yeah when would you say it was like the first time you didn't feel i guess told to just deal with it like how old were you when when was the time that i wasn't told i'm still told that to this very day I okay think. the first time <laughs> <laughs> do you know what actually it was probably maybe about two or three years ago i'm gonna say just before kind of the time of lockdown actually was mm -hmm. probably the point where i thought that 
you know, it was it was changing a little bit and people are a little bit more understanding. I mean, you can go to a doctor, can't you? You can go and have, um, you know, therapy. And that's, it's, that's it is hard to thing. get, though. Like, it's it was, not easy. Yeah, it was hugely tough to get. Getting Just getting an appointment for me, um, mm. I went to a, won't talk too much about it, but I went to a specialist and, and to go to the specialist, I had to wait sometimes up to six to eight months to be able to get sat down. And that mm. was just to get a um, diagnosis, just to get a diagnosis for um you know for whatever that was and you know when you're in that gap from like oh i'll go to the doctor next week and i'll see what's you know wrong my big toe um to having to wait eight months to find out you know what's going on in your own head and that's the first of what four or five that you may need in the future you don't get a diagnosis until you're what you know a few years in and that's what happened to me i didn't get a diagnosis about a few of the things um back in the day around what you know i was going through because it took such a long time to get sat down with someone to actually go through those proper those proper steps but just back onto your point around you know when did i start hearing about it? i think it started to really come in just before i would say just before lockdown you know so maybe about two and a bit years ago where people are actually like how are you doing you know how are things and i think that kind of came with funny enough i think that kind of came with the kind of people that you start to see and hang around with mm. So, you know, your company, and that's definitely changed over the last few years. And you start to find people that are kind of like-minded that have the same kind of mindset as you. So then you can have those conversations. And that, again, it's rare, but I found them. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, and that's always really nice. So yeah, it's, it's, it's I would say it's pretty, pretty recent, sadly. And, oh, poor, so I'm glad that we've all, like, actually made you feel supported and yeah, I just listen to. And I've just noticed my dog is now in the corner of my camera. Lurking. <laughs> yeah. He made an appearance. But yeah, I mean, honestly, it's kind of same. I mean, I've always had mental health issues, but they've never really been taken seriously. It's always been, yeah, you're just depressed. And I'm like, oh, okay, is that it? Like, do you do anything about that just what <laughs> that's not helping me doesn't do um, anything does it no that's like oh yeah your leg's broken it's like okay you can do Crocast. anything about it or <laughs> i'm bleeding out here yeah i mean oh, my he... favorite experience was going to a psych psychiatrist and they were just like you can't die from a panic attack and sent me on my way and i'm like what just happened <laughs> yeah there was there's an in, there's a instance this is this is going a few years back i remember going to a gp about just not feeling very good i was getting really bad anxiety attacks and um totally not me that was that was totally off the cuff didn't realize that that was a thing really didn't have any kind of like understanding of what it was and realized it was like it was either anxiety attack or panic attack and i had a lot of those so i went to a doctor and they're like yeah i don't really think there's much wrong with you and I'm like, I feel like I feel like there's something wrong with me and I'm coming to you to give me a little bit of support to check, you know, kind of help me here. So like, I don't think yeah. there's anything I can put you in contact with um, a website that you might be able to go to to get some learning resources. I'm like, no, no, I'm not here to learn. I'm here to to get that kind of support. Yes, there is a bit of self-learning there, but that isn't going to fix the issue. <laughs> like, um, and it, it's, it, it was it's changed a lot, hasn't it? But <laughs> my God, I've, I've had a few of those conversations. I've been in, I've been in work calls where someone said that um, this is this is years ago. And, and it makes you it makes you kind of think how how far we've gone. And Salt's made a good com uh, comment here. Salt's just said my my company's health insurance uh, now includes mental health stuff, too. And sick wow. days also included with mental health days. And that's that's crazy. And this is the complete polar opposite of of that. I've, I've been in a work meeting way back in the day where someone said, oh, they've not turned up. They're not feeling too good. Oh, they might have depression. Or, you know, what do we do about that? Oh, I'll have to have a chat with them later. No, that's not that's not the way of handling things. No. How can you how can you do that? Oh, they've having they're having a bit of an off day. I'm a little bit stressed. No, they've got depression now. <laughs> it's, it's just the, the, <laughs> like, yeah, you go. There's the stamp. That's it. That's who you are now. And then that yeah. sticks with you. Yeah, it does. My mum just made a good point, actually. Cool. As an older parent, we weren't aware of mental health, so didn't recognise it in our children. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. Mm -hmm. Because, it, obviously, mental health has always been a thing, but it wasn't a known thing. Do, like, 
but you, but you know what what i gotta say like you know round of applause to all those parents out there that actually want to understand there are so many out there and you know i've come across it and i'm only talking from general like just experience I'm, i could be completely wrong but i've seen so many people out there that just completely you know disregard it and and think you know we were fine when we were young you know back in the day it was fine for me when i was you know when i was in my 20s i never came across anything like that they probably did they just didn't it was just not a way of thinking yeah and now there are so many people out there that are really going look i want to just at least understand a little bit more about that so you know hats off to you keep doing it yeah definitely and actually on the same way easy busy if i get really angry i just cry i can't actually be angry without crying it's, it's a weird thing because then people don't believe you're angry they just go oh but you're sad it's like no i'm really pissed off right now i just these tears are just happening <laughs> if you gotta let it out you gotta let it out right you can't you can't not and if you do it's going to cause you more harm right you'll get you'll get angry then maybe or you'll get yeah. you know you'll get it'll get worse and it becomes a manifest into other things it you does gotta, you know as long as it's god i always say the same thing and it's it's it i guess take it with a pinch of salt but as long as it's not hurting anyone um and i'm talking about mental health <laughs> nothing else as long as it's yeah. not as long as it's not hurting anything and it's helping you deal with yeah. something and it's not hurting yourself what i'm saying is you know it's 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 okay you know we're allowed to have emotions are we llama i'm not too sure yes. please confirm yes we are allowed to have emotions Okay. And I am okay. so pleased to see that so many people cry at everything because I I do cry at everything. I literally cried on the phone to my boyfriend this morning. Like, nothing bad. He was just telling me he bought me a gift. I cried. <laughs> what, what did you get? <laughs> he bought me those Disney miniatures of, like, the mini versions of the Disney things. Good cry. Good cry. <laughs> and I was like, that's so nice. And he was like, it was eight pound in Tesco. Chill. <laughs> and I, I guess the last thing I want to ask is, do you think that you have, I guess, experienced more mental health discrimination? I guess is the word because you are a male. I think the whole term getting over it. Yeah, I think that is you know because you're a lad, you're a bloke your man uh yeah it can it can kind of change things a little bit i think when you're i i think actually i see it more you used to see it more in a, a working environment you know you might be at work and i for for me just as a personality i'm a little bit scatterbrained i quite i can focus in on something but unless i've got that if i don't have that focus i can be a bit scattered and that's no problem it's just how i think i'm still you know productive and all that stuff or i'd like to believe it but if you're scattered and you don't you're you you're struggling to kind of you know piece together what you need to do your next step or you know try and find that that uh that organization there are others out there that might go you know what is actually wrong with you like why are you thinking this way you know and you could get stressed by that and people just say look you know why are you why are you so stressed and people don't understand that that doesn't just have to be a high level of stress it could just be a tiny tiny bit of stress that can affect you um and i think at work things like that because you're not able to manage it maybe that well sometimes and that happens to everyone i think that's that's kind of what i used to see um in a personal setting not an awful lot but let's just say it wasn't it, it's not not there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think work was like where i used to work place I used to work working bars go out and retail things like that i think it was a huge just people weren't interested you know if you couldn't turn up on work at work on time um because you were you weren't able to get up because of stress or because something was you know affecting you in some way and you used the term i think it's my mental health sometimes those people would go look i don't think that person needs to work here anymore <laughs> and i'm being serious you know maybe <laughs> they're not just uh, so bad good enough or they're not someone that's um what's the word capable reliable i guess the word's reliable you're not reliable enough um because you're 10 minutes late and it was due to mental health maybe it's not Maybe it's not time for you to be here. Um, and yeah, so I used to experience that a lot. I'm not saying that that's what happened to me. <laughs> I'm saying it's, yeah, it's definitely been a few times. Not it's okay. No, I mean, I've definitely seen it a lot. And actually with some trans friends that I have, 
that were perceived as male when they were a kid mm. were treated as man up, get on with it, you know. Everything's fine, just stop whining about it. Now they've actually become themselves and identify as female. Those same people that told them to man up and deal with it now like respect their emotions and support them and it's like you know they're the same person uh, right like uh, literally yeah. nothing changed oh uh, my little You're... heart is hurting <laughs> it's, it's like... hurting a little bit why is uh... but that just makes the sort of sexist view of mental health so apparent when it's like the same people and it's like but why just because you thought they were a man you treated them differently is it is it's that term isn't it it's, i can't remember what, i can't remember i might i might be butchering this but it's, it's the same painting painting a different canvas mm. something like that um but then it changes everything doesn't it because it's on a different bit of paper or something um even though it's the it's the same painting you know it's it's still it's still who you are um oh god that yeah but do you think it's changing? That's, the, I guess, the question I have for you is, do you think any of this is changing? We talk about all these great things that are happening and all the stuff that we've come across that might not be so great, but do you think there's actually some positive change? Yes and no. <laughs> yes, I feel there is more sort of legal rights for people with mental health problems now, where you can complain at work for them not supporting your mental health and you are backed up by the law which is great and amazing but i'm not so sure that i guess people genuinely respect it they're just like oh i have to because otherwise i will get in trouble unless mm. they are personally affected by poor mental health either themselves or someone close to them i feel like they feel it's just a thing they have to respect rather than actually appreciating it yeah i hear what you're saying there actually i think it really depends in the set on the setting that you're in doesn't it mm. um and you you say to yourself you know the business that you might be working with or you know the company you might keep they're always going to be different everyone's going to experience different things but i think work is the one thing that should be a constant Lockdown made me struggle with people more because I started analysing myself and taking off my beat. Oh, I read that as BZ mask. BS mask. Um, no, I completely get that. I definitely have social anxiety now and I never used to. <laughs> the thought of going out and having to be like, wait, how am I supposed to act in this situation? I, I struggle with um do you know what's really weird i used to be able to maintain eye contact i can't do that anymore Same. that's so weird right i mean is, is it weird if you do it as well maybe not so much yeah it, it i've always had a bit of a weird thing with eye contact because i'm so much lower down than people that i'm literally like mm. hey <laughs> but yeah and also the case that I just imagine everyone is just bobbling heads now. Hmm. I already so have less social anxiety. Fair. I guess oh. it has normalised. Oh. Care to explain how it's reduced your social anxiety? Because I am curious. Oh, Rushy's got a good one. Since I started working my job, I feel very disconnected from the outside world with friends and honestly the loneliest i've ever felt i get that because you're always working and when you're not yeah. working you're recovering from working yeah you're trying to gain back that time right and you don't have it, it, you have to find that time for everyone else as well you know it's your time you know what i mean that's tough that's tough yeah i'm sorry that you've feeling lonely and My i, I, I do get that <laughs> I said it was a good one. I meant as it's a good comment, <laughs> not a good situation to be in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good clarification. <laughs> Felt like I had to. 
yeah no i i agree with that clarification and i think that's something that employers don't necessarily appreciate is that not everyone has the same whether it be physical energy or mental energy or you no know, and everyone needs some sort of flexibility whether it be nine days instead of ten so you get one day off or if you stay late at work one day you can go home earlier the next just some bit of flexibility to give people a chance yeah it's when you say it's it's there's that there's that fine line between like being kind of like kind of escaped in your own world and you're sat in your own world and you're dealing with your own thing and dealing with all of that but then if you have like zero interaction you kind of like you burn yourself out still don't you so yeah. just ha being able to have that kind of conversation even just a hi how you doing what's up what you be what's new or you know having a conversation like now even if it was for 10 minutes it can change everything but if you are just so exhausted and you can't get that time back anywhere else i mean there are people out there that that are constantly traveling for their job and they don't see their friends or family and like being online has changed that hasn't it because you can still Definitely. talk to people yeah, social mobility has definitely come in and that's changed an awful lot. But then there's still the cases that you being able to see someone face to face is 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 so much more worthy, isn't it? It's worth it. It it's oh yeah, it changes an awful lot for you. And then again. with with my OCD, there is really only one person outside of my household that I regularly see. So when I do see my boyfriend, he is attacked with hugs. I'm like, no, don't let go. I haven't had human contact in ages. <laughs> and you wash your hands, right? Yes. <laughs> like, genuinely, I buy him hand sanitizer that I like the smell of. Because I'm like, dude, you need to clean yourself before you touch me. <laughs> but I want to touch you. <laughs> yeah. Dear, oh dear. Well... I guess I feel like we're kind of coming to a close. Now. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's got any questions. So let's, I don't know, chat. If you've got anything you want to ask, you want to chat about, feel free, just throw it in there. But if you feel like you haven't got anything else to say or you just want to give us some love, feel free to. Um, yeah, feel free to just chat away now. But I think we've talked enough. Oh, I have a question. Good i lost the chat there we go i was trying to stall for time there <laughs> on bad mental health days do you find that streaming can help you get away from everything or do you need to take a break from streaming to be on your own i personally stopped streaming because i couldn't cope with being in constant conversation with so many people yeah i it depends on what part of my mental health is bad that day <laughs> like if it's social overload then i i don't want to stream i'm like oh god people <laughs> but if it's a i'm genuinely just hating the world right now and feel kind of poop then streaming does help kind of distract me and i love all you all you lovely people and it's nice to be surrounded by such kind and loving people to remind yourself that the world isn't all shit <laughs> i don't know about masters i mean yeah i would does streaming help me cope yeah i think it does i think i think it really comes down to like where you are and what kind of place you're in of course but i would say it definitely helps me i mean i work the, the hours i work and what i do is actually really quite stressful people may disagree and i find it really stressful um so being able to just completely like shut that away and focus on something that i enjoy and speak to people that i enjoy speaking to and you know doing it echoing kind of what you've just said there lana um i would say it definitely helps i think there are times where i just do not have the energy to do it but i will still do it because i enjoy it so much mm. and that and that can maybe help hurt me a little bit maybe lack of sleep but yeah i genuinely think it does help personally but I just you gotta find your own stride, don't you? And I think the pressure to stream can be quite tough. Cause I I fight with that. I'm like, oh god, I actually haven't streamed in like 12 days. Oh god, oh god. And it's like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's just about doing what makes you happy. 
when it does come to streaming and mental health how do you balance life relationship work and personal interests my first response is when you find out please let me know because um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'd like to know but i think it it's taking a step back and thinking about what the priority is to you like what means the most to you um and for me like relationships and personal interests come way above anything else like that is where my happiness and i guess like the meaning of life to me is. so that's where i would put the majority of my energy and that's kind of how i get through it but everyone has different priorities i mean Lummi, you're supposed to be the smart pretty friend <laughs> yeah sorry i'm, I'm not <laughs> i'm terrified of schedules i know that sounds strange breaking <laughs> but yeah when you've had such a I guess chaotic and unpredictable life with different health conditions and you know i wouldn't know what would happen the next day growing up would i be in a hospital would i be at school who knows that having a schedule and feeling like oh god i have to do this and i can't it's almost more stressful <laughs> so i've almost become schedule adverse <laughs> which yeah. isn't very healthy so I am working on that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, though. I think so. I mean, you know, when we're talking about, you know, streaming, yeah, I've got a schedule. When you talk about my actual normal day to day life, my work, I'm not going to plan for anything at work. I'll just I know what I'm doing. I'll go and do it. You know, it's, 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 it's just about finding the right thing for you. Don't be beholden to your schedule, though. Don't ever be beholden to it. You don't deserve that. But no, thank you, Masters, for joining me and everyone for being so chatty and just hanging out and yeah if this is something that you enjoy and actually want more of do let me know um because i definitely enjoyed myself and if there are any different mental healthy lifeness topics you would like to be discussed and let me know I now have plans for the evening. Hey. We have the next guest scheduled. I'm considering maybe bringing my boyfriend on to discuss our anxiety fueled awkward first encounter where I had a panic attack in his bathroom. Um, That's a good story. Yeah. It, it was fun, question mark. <laughs> so that could possibly be the next guest unless someone better turns out because you know he's not not the greatest i'm joking i love you <laughs> all right then well on that note thanks all thanks for having me Lama. very 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 much and i will see you all next time Bye. That was my Markiplier impression. Did you like it? <laughs> Just leave. Leave now. <laughs> Hi, this is Future Me again. Thank you very much for watching and or listening to this podcast. Environment and oh my goodness, I genuinely think my mum might be trying to burn the house down. It's gone off three times in a row. Four. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, sorry. you will be sorry. Why is it still going on? Don't type on here. Stop the fire. <laughs> <laughs>